Hi, I'm Duncan. My name is Emily, and this is our final project on Fizeau interferometers and their applications in lens fabrication. The Fizeau interferometer is a widely applied interferometer used to check and measure lens defects against test plates, which are lenses used as a standard to test other lenses against. The interferometer works by using the interference fringes generated from reflections between surfaces at a test plate and the surface being tested. The Fizeau can be used with a laser source and a beam splitter to direct the fringes into a detector and accurately measure the interference fringes, or a monochromatic source can be shined onto the lens and the test plate to see the fringes and deviations in the fringes at a glance. In this scenario, fringes of equal thickness are formed because the air between the lenses creates a thin film interference pattern. This makes only a few fringes visible and makes deviations in the fringes easily distinguished. To see how a simple Fizeau interferometer is used to properly craft and polish lenses, we went to the Tucson Optical Research Corporation. They start by picking the proper type of glass from their large assortment and then cut it roughly to the required size requested by their client. The piece is then polished down to approximately the right curvature using various machines. When the surface is very close to the right curvature, they place it on top of a test surface and look at the interference pattern to inspect for imperfections. This is their simple Fizeau interferometer. When the lenses produce very straight fringes, they are further inspected using a shack interferometer. At Torque we saw a different interferometer called the shack interferometer, which uses a shack cube. A shack cube is a simple cube beam slitter with a high quality plano convex lens attached to the mirror side of the cube. The laser is attached with fiber optics in the model that we saw. The lens tested is set up some distance away from the interferometer, so the light from the laser leaves and diverges from the beam splitter, and then reflects and converges back, giving interference fringes. This requires little alignment. We saw a lens aligned and the fringes viewable in only one or two minutes. The fringes can be disturbed by air movement, however. They also told us about their digital interferometer they were currently in the process of setting up, which essentially takes a picture of a lens and generates a type of heat map corresponding to the peaks and valleys of the lens. In this example, the dark spot corresponds to a dip in the lens. To correct for this, they outlined the yellow zones which were then polished down. In this final image, we can see how the surface of the lens is much more uniform and passes their regulations. When a lens is laid on top of a test plate and the monochromatic light source is added, interference fringes become visible. If there is no defect, the fringes should be perfectly straight and of equal thickness. If there is a bump or hole, there will be a deviation in one direction of the fringes visible. If some light pressure is applied, the number of fringes will increase or decrease if there is a defect. There can be an open or closed side of the wedge. The side is closed if the pressure increases the number of fringes, and if the pressure decreases the number of fringes, it's on the open side. Depending on which side of the deviation of fringes the closed and open sides are, the defect can be identified as a bump or hole. Newton's fringes, a different kind of fringes, can also be observed when a flat plate and a spherical plate come into contact. Though in our example, they are very difficult to see.